Hey there, LEGO fans, and welcome back to another build. For this week's release, we got something that's looking pretty interactive with the Droid Commander Kit. Set number 75253 at 1,177 pieces, and simply put, this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun because we've got three different droids that we can control from our smart devices. And interestingly enough, this kit doesn't actually come with a set of printed instructions, so I'll be assembling this one off of my tablet. Now, I'm definitely looking forward to playing with these. So, let's get this unboxed, get these things built, so we can start playing with these droids. So here we are, with the droids assembled from the droid commander kit. The droids themselves, pretty obvious, right here in front of us, and the commander port we'll get to in a little bit. But first, I want to talk about the build experience. As I mentioned before the build, this set doesn't come with printed instructions. Instead, you're directed to the app to guide you through the process. Unfortunately, my tablet was too old and slow to run the app, and I felt like my phone screen was too small to appear on the video. So I opted to download the PDFs, which install the droids as you see them here. We have R2-D2, with the control module already inside, the Gronk, with one of his sets of arms attached. The Mouser, who's assembled with some wheels that are only intended to be used while he's sitting there without the control module attached. A bunch of extra pieces that I don't really know what to do with, and no real constructions telling me how to move the control module from one droid to the next. As it turns out, you can't actually assemble all the accessories that come with this kit at once, because there simply isn't enough parts for them. You have to disassemble them to swap the parts around to make one accessory or another, including some pieces that are built into the Gronk's current arms. So ultimately I find that to be a little disappointing, a few more pieces would have been great, and I highly recommend that you use the app to guide you through the process, because otherwise there's really no way to figure out how to do this properly. Now, before we start having a closer look at the droids, let's first get a little introduction to the electronics that come with this kit. First, we have this control module, which is pretty impressive in and of itself. It contains the battery box, you can see back in the bottom corner here the little red circle, that's one of the motors, we have another independent motor on the opposite side, Towards the top in the center, we have this little port where you can connect a sensor, motor or otherwise, and another one identical on the other side. A control module, which allows you to communicate with all these devices, some kind of gyroscope or tilt sensor, and the control module with Bluetooth connectivity, allowing you to wirelessly connect to and control the droid of your choice. 
And then connecting to this module, we have on the left hand side here, an extra motor. And on the right, we have a little sensor, which is able to both read colors and distance. And now to the droids, where first we have R2-D2. You can see right here in the front center, the control module sticking out the bottom with a pair of wheels coming out either side, a little power button right in the front center, easy to access. Just above that and a little bit to the right, we have the color rangefinder sensor. And over here on the back, we can see where the little motor is attached. For this little droid, the actuated components allow R2 to go from a standing up position to his rolling around position where he can of course drive around, rotate his head, and then snap back up to a standing position. And now to the Gronk, who in this iteration is assembled with his bus saw arm and punching arm. You can see right in the front center, we have the little color and range center, easy to spot. And circling around to the back, we can see the control modules all tucked inside, the little motor just beneath, and the power button, while not visible, is easy to reach right inside and press with ease. And for the Gronk's movements, he's of course able to walk, and then he's got the right arm where he's able to throw a punch, left arm where he can chop that saw blade, and back to the right arm where he can fire that little cannon. And now to the Mauser, who as you can see here is now sitting on top of the control module, so removing those other wheels and sitting up a little bit higher. He's got his color range sensor right in the front center and spinning all the way around to the back. We can see the motor is tucked neatly inside. In this case, the power button is actually pretty inaccessible. So we have this little trigger right down here on the side, which you can press to hit it remotely. And for the Mauser's movements, he's of course able to drive around quite a bit faster than the others. And he's got these two little flaps on either side, which he can use to knock over objects. Now to the app, which when you first launch it, drops you right here in a familiar scene on Tatooine, where we can see our three droids, which won't be there for you initially because I've already followed the process to build them. So now they're unlocked. To get the building instructions, all you have to do is enter Watto's shop. Here, he's ready to help guide you through the assembly of the droid of your choice. Selecting R2 as our first option, first brings you to this menu where you can optionally choose to follow the instructions on how to remove the electronics from either the master or Gronk droid. Then it gives you another optional step here, marked here as prepare where it shows you how to prepare the electronic components so they're all set to be inserted into R2-D2. And then of course, we can start the build, where it's a very nice, simple, clean interface, showing you what you need, clicking on the right arrow, advances you one step at a time with a small animation to go from one step to the other, which just looks nice and smooth. So that's pretty great. And all of this seems pretty basic, and that's of course nice, but then you realize that at any time, you can stop, zoom in, swivel around and get different perspectives on what you're assembling. So if you're ever not sure how something fits, this is actually a much easier way to figure it out. And it always has the most recent step kind of flashing and highlighted, so it's really clear what you need to be focusing on. All in all, I found this to be actually a really great building experience. I'm kind of sorry I didn't build them this way initially. Once the build is done, through a variety of little training missions, the app shows you how to program your robot. Here we have the interface, with the commands broken down by color. Yellow to start, orange for sensors, blue for articulation, green for movement, and purple for sound effects. And if you find any of these icons looking unfamiliar and you're not sure how to deal with it, it's pretty easy to just hold down your finger on it and the app gives you a little description. To program your robot, all you have to do is line up the icons in sequence. Here we have the yellow one to start the whole sequence, a little green forward arrow to move forward by one unit, but instead I'm gonna drop this little orange guy here, which tells the mouse to drive forward up until a time when the rangefinder gets to a minimum distance. And when that does happen, open up the little flap on the right hand side and then play a sound effect, but not sound effect number one. We'll go for number two here. And this just makes for a sequence of actions where one thing follows the next, follows the next. But it doesn't have to be that way because as you can see from this tiny little demo of code, you can set it up so that many pieces of code are running at the same time, performing multiple actions all at once. And beyond the programming, we also have the driving where here we have the controls for the Mauser, where we just have two sliders on the left and right. So you can independently control the forward and reverse functions of the two wheels. But that's not all, because we've got these six colored buttons, which you can each program to have functions of their own. Opening up the menu, you can see that three buttons here each have one very simple function attached, but it doesn't need to be this way. You can make much longer, more complex programs if you want, or just keep it simple to a little sound effect, whatever you want. Here we have R2's controls, where you can drive them around with a virtual little thumbstick, and of course having the six programmable buttons. And now we have the Gronk, where you can drive forward, backwards or veer slightly to the left or right. And of course, again, having the six programmable buttons. From here, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how you can program your robot or what it can do, because honestly, it's really vast and that could be a whole video all on its own. But there is one feature I really wanna point out because I think it's really cool. Like in this case, we have R2-D2 scanning for the red marker. So he drives around, looks for it, and when he eventually does find it, he hones in on it and drives right up to it. 
And that doesn't have to be the end of the sequence. If you want, you can do something else after that, but that's where the programming ends in this case. So I think it's pretty clear here that this set was made to be played with. These robots are interactive. There's so many things you could do with them. Honestly, I can't even think about how many hours I could spend trying to program it to do different missions or tasks or, you know, driving around and having these extra little buttons programmed to do, you know, whatever functions. And that could be a lot of fun in various different ways. In the brief time I've had to play with this kit before releasing this video, I've only found one thing that didn't really work very well for me. And that's having to do with the driving controls on R2-D2 and the Mauser. R2, when he's standing upright, he turns very well. But when he's in his reclined driving position, just as it is with the Mauser, there's a bunch of extra weight on the other non-driven wheels. And those high traction wheels just don't quite have enough grip to get those other wheels to slide side to side. So the turning action in these cases is not very good. As a display piece, I don't find this set gets that far. I mean, we got three recognizable droids. They look pretty good from a distance, but the detail is pretty low. So when you get up close, you know, it's just not quite that iconic display level. And when it comes to parts to reuse, I mean, I think this is absolutely fantastic. The possibilities of how you can program and repurpose these electronics components are virtually endless. I mean, my imagination has not found into it yet. Additionally, as there's very clear instructions on how to remove the electronic components from each of these droids without taking them apart, it makes it very easy to keep these guys intact and repurpose the electronics for something else, so you can easily reassemble them back in here at a future date, if you so chose to. And I think it's also very much worth mentioning that this is a great introduction to programming, a great way to activate and engage the brain in a way that most of the LEGO sets, Mindstorm aside of course, simply don't do. So, bottom line, while I think as a display piece this is just kind of mediocre, when it comes to a play kit and pieces to reuse, this set is absolutely fantastic. And if you're someone who really likes to tinker with your LEGO, I don't think you're going to find a set with a higher level of engagement in this price range. 